Hey guys, Randy here from Our Cozy Garden and welcome to my office slash TV room slash game room. And um, today we'd like to share with you the varieties that we planted this fall for our spring cut flowers, um, specifically tulips and daffodils. So we allocated about two garden beds for these uh, spring flowering bulbs. The tulips we are planting as annuals and um, the daffodils we're planting as perennials. So we have a few varieties of tulips and daffodils that we are growing and um, I'm leaving this space in here so I can show you a photo of the tulip because we don't have one yet. And um, we ordered our tulips and daffodils in bulk and um, it wasn't a lot. I think it was, it ended up about a thousand bulbs, but um, we uh, fortunately, um, we sold a number of it. So thank you friends and countrymen who ordered from us and um, but um, the rest we are planting uh, for our cut flowers this spring. <laughs> Okay, so um, we are going to use this uh, middle garden bed as our main tulip cut flower garden bed for next year. And the way we are going to plant it is how many cut flower farmers do it. Um, it will be very different from when you plant your tulips that you want to overwinter and then naturalize over the years. Because uh, tulips are considered annual in uh, cut flower industry. So what we do is you put the bulbs in there and then you plant them really close just like an egg tray and then once they flower or at least they show color on their uh, flower uh, next year spring then you dig everything out including the bulbs you clean it off and then you store it that way. Um, um, the adva main advantage is you get that um, uh, extra few inches for the cut flower tulips. You also get a uh, few days more for storage and you can keep them on your fridge and then just take them out once you need them. It gives you that flexibility. But the downside is um, the bulbs usually go to compost or in our case we might try to plant them somewhere else and see if they flower and then maybe bloom in um, two years time. So we'll see. But honestly we're running out of space. so. Um, the thing with this uh, garden bed, if you remember in our previous videos, this space is a uh, gravel parking pad. So everything underneath this is um, gravel. I just did have the, the patience to dig all the gravels out, gravel out. So now, after this, um, you have this black soil or topsoil in here. Underneath that, about four to five inches below, um, is a gravel pad. So that will be my challenge for this year because I'd like to dig uh, a good uh, trench, a uh, trench with good depth. So I would have to do that. But um, if moving forward we're going to use this as a cut flower garden bed, then um, I would have to do it now rather than later. So yeah. <music> First one is copper image. Um, we really like this variety. Um, we, th we love the color combination in it and um, the, the light center and then as it, um, as it moves outside the petals turn darker. And um, we also love how um, peony like it looks and um, I think it fills up a bouquet really beautifully. So that's our first one, tulip copper image. And um, we'll be honest, we, we've also looked around um, farmers and uh, YouTubers and um, online stores, uh, those that sell out fast 
or recommend it highly and um, yeah this one came up uh, pretty early next variety is Windham and um, this one we picked mainly because of how it looks it looks very classy it's very classic um, um, it's described as burgundy wine red that has uh, white tips and um, it's in spite of how it looks it it's a very it's a fairly new uh, variety introduced to the market and um, it's double flowering as well so uh, we're loving that I think it sits perfectly well with maybe um, light or even white um, fillers um, in a bouquet. Next is Miami Sunset. This one is a very cheery uh, single tulip with a fringe tip. And um, I think it's, um, it's a very bright and very uh, poppy in terms of color. Um, it would sit beautifully in a bouquet. Uh, bunched together maybe six or twelve um, in one bouquet with uh, beautiful fillers so we're trying this one out all right next is uh, amazing grace and um, I just learned that this one is a which is a sister to copper image it's a double uh, peony like tulip and I think it's very elegant. Um, it's a pink version of the copper image. And um, some of it will have uh, green streaks on the side. Um, it will sit, sit well uh, by itself or with fillers in a bouquet. And I think it's a very beautiful flower. <sighs> I wonder how much it costs to get a writer. Okay, next one is Freeman, which is a double eight peony uh, blooming tulip. And um, it's a bit lighter than copper image. And, um, but it does have that uh, copper tone, uh, especially on the outer uh, petals with some green streaks. So I think it, it sits very uh, nicely. Um, as a bunch and um, yeah so now the princesses um, these two are our top sellers I mean we haven't even grown them yet but they've been uh, selling like hotcakes that we'd have to stop otherwise we'd run out and we won't be able to grow them ourselves so we have the um, Princess Irene Tulip and um, it's a single uh, petal peony but it's a very uh, distinct um, looking tulip in that it has this almost like a sword a streak from the base um, of the petal that uh, goes you know sharp upward and um, this one is a bestseller and um, the color is very I would say it's very young it's also very cheerful and um, how the color changes from that uh, dark red to orange to yellow um, I think that's what makes it really unique and beautiful the other one is the pretty princess um, it is a um, a variety of uh, Princess Irene Tulip. Uh, this one is a pink version of that. And, um, but it does have that uh, very distinct um, streak from the base out, outside with um, almost, almost like dark maroon um, that goes from the base. And then, well, if you think of it, it's, not, it's more of a flame than a sword. And um, yeah, I think it's very distinct. It's very beautiful. It's a single uh, petal, pea, uh, petal tulip, but um, 
It's very beautiful. Okay, so this time we're planting our specialty daffodils. Um, these ones I ordered, I think, back in July or August, uh, back when we haven't decided to um, start a flower farm next year. <clears throat> so these are um, something I, I'd like to try out and uh, plant in my garden, especially that daffodils are uh, and narcissus are are rabbit uh, resistant, deer resistant, and since um, because of the uh, vol issues that we have, um, I'd like to plant more of these uh, bulbs in our garden. So these ones, the first one is the Arctic Bells Daffodil, and um, it's a mini daffodil. It can grow only up to six to eight inches, but I'm very interested with them because they look uh, different compared to the other uh, big daffodils that we have. And um, yeah, I'd like to see how they look uh, when they bloom in spring. The next one would be the decoy daffodil. It's also another one I'd like to try. I really like the color combination for this one, white and um, red or white and deep orange. So these guys are going on this part of our garden, uh, which is currently our strawberry patch. But um, since these strawberries are about two years old and they're still productive, but they're not as productive as they used to be. So it's either, it's, I'll probably take them out soon. Um, it's either this fall or next spring. If I need the space, they would have to go uh, this autumn. But uh, otherwise, um, they can stay in there until spring, until I dig them out. And um, I've already started taking out the, some of the strawberries on the other side. So to, um, to fill the space, we're putting in specialty daffodils here, here and there. And then based on my plan, you would have, I would plant um, garlic around it again to improve the chances of the bulbs uh, surviving and not getting eaten by uh, rodents. And then and I'd fill it with garlic and then um, those are the Italian hardnecks garlic. And then in the middle would be the tulip bulbs that we are planting as a cut flower flower. Uh, cut flower for next spring. All right, next would be the Narcissus Tahiti. It's a yellow double petaled Narcissus with a red orange in the center. It's very beautiful. It has very long stems, um, 14 to 16 uh, inches. And um, this one is another bestseller for me. Um, someone ordered um, almost all of my stock because they just look very pretty, very elegant when planted in uh, bunches just as they do um, as they grow in the wild. So that's Narcissus uh, Tahiti. So this one is called uh, Narcissus Del Nashaw, and this one is a personal favorite of mine. I really like how the uh, very soft peach or light pink uh, centers um, furl um, right there in the middle, and then you'd have double petals uh, with um, a very beautiful uh, tall stems 14 to 18 inches and um, yeah this one is my one of my favorites and um, we're planting it um, in one uh, whole row here at the, what used to be the strawberry patch and yeah I hope we're we're getting a lot of blooms next year for this one Now, 
This next one is uh, called Narcissus uh, Cum Laude or Cum Laude in the Philippines as we read it. And um, this one has very similar uh, color tones with that of Del Nashal, which I really like. But this one has a, an open bell in the center with some uh, tint of yellow. And I really like how the color combination works together for this one. The white, the peach, and the yellow uh, center. And um, this one is uh, relatively tall as well. So this should be um, nice and beautiful as a cut flower for next year. And um, I think it's very elegant. It's very minimalist, but it's very showy at the same time. So this next one is um, also very special for me. It's called the uh, Narcissus Thalia. And um, it is, I chose this variety because um, it reminds me a lot of the orchids that my father, my dad used to grow in his garden. My, my dad was a, an avid uh, orchid collector and um, a gardener. And um, this one reminds me of the white Cattleya orchid that he used to grow um, in our garden so yeah and it indeed uh, Narcissus Thalia is called the orchid uh, Narcissus uh, because of that so I think it's really elegant it's very beautiful um, perhaps a you know a wedding or um, even for um, other special occasions Mother's Day perhaps uh, this would be a great bouquet So I ran out of bulbs and um, I have a spare garden bed that I can use for uh, cut flower tulips and um, it, it, it's a good problem because we ordered a thousand bulbs and I think we sold off about 300 of them so that's good but um, now I have more space than I have bulbs so I decided to add more and um, just not a lot because it's too late to order in bulk at this point but I have I found this one it's um, we're in late in October so there's not many to choose from I found the parrot prince um, it's um, I think it's a uh, I don't know burgundy or purple red um, and um, I, I, I did not order a parrot tulip this year or last time so I'm, I want to try this one out and see if um, we'd like that but so far in the photo um, it looks nice so that's um, Parrot Prince Tulip and then the other one that I got is Assorted Triumph Tulips so now I really don't like ordering uh, assorted tulips just because they're very unpredictable and with uh, cut flowers next year I'd like to know what I'm growing or at least you know have something to expect from the bulbs that I'm growing and then you could plan better and see you know mix and match and how the tulips would look like but this one is a one-off uh, I'm not sure if we are selling this as a cut flower as well um, but we could always have this for our own use uh, inside the house and also um, since it's I haven't ordered any triumph uh, type uh, tulips um, from the bulk order that I did then I would like to see if I like anything in there 
Yeah, most of them are singles. But um, if I like anything, then I could just look for that and maybe order that for next year. So yes, uh, these guys are going in here and in here. So let's do that. Just a few more, uh, but these ones we are um, we didn't order a lot. We ordered some of them were nine pieces, ten pieces, uh, twelve pieces, and um, these ones we ordered before we decided to, that we are doing a flower farm next year. So these are for our personal use, and um, the plan is to have it um, naturalize as well, perennialize in our garden. So the first one is Angelique Tulip, which is a pink tulip or um, pink peach tulip, which is very uh, elegant, very, very dainty. And um, I was also curious about the tulips that are considered blue. So I did order a blue aimable tulip. And um, it, it really, it's more of a purple uh, than blue, but um, it's probably one of the closest to the color blue in the tulip world. And then there's also the blue heron tulip. So I'm trying those two uh, for uh, the blue tulips in our garden. And then the last one is a fancy frills tulip. Um, this one for me, it looks very similar to uh, the angelic tulip in terms of uh, color um, but this one has uh, fringe um, fringe petals so this would um, be very interesting to see next year uh, blooming and that's what we planted on our garden for our spring flowering bulbs we have the tulips and daffodils and um, by spring next, uh, next year, we should have beautiful flowers for bouquets. Um, we're aiming for Mother's Day, but uh, we never know. Sometimes it can get uh, really hard to have them bloom by then uh, here in Zone 3B, Alberta, Canada. But in spring, if you are in Calgary or area, we would be selling these um, beautiful flowering bulbs in bouquets. And um, let us know. Um, feel free to check us out at ourcozyblooms.com. That's where we will be selling mainly our um, bouquets. We are also um, on Instagram, um, Our Cozy Blooms. And of course, uh, this channel, Our Cozy Garden, and our Instagram, Our Cozy Garden. Feel free to check us out. And thank you so much for your time today. And um, hope you have a wonderful day.